What's up, everybody? My name is Ryan Thomas, and you're tuning in to the Thomas Takes Sports Podcast live on Facebook, Twitter, uh, YouTube at the Thomas Take uh, Sports Podcast YouTube channel, as well as, last but not least, uh, Grandstand Sports Network. Uh, very excited to start off with today's show. I had some original plans as far as what I was going to talk about today on the show, which I'm still going to talk about those topics. But I wanted to start off with today's show talking about the Buffalo Bills. Today they announced that they signed former uh, Jacksonville Jaguars running back, former New York Jets running back, former New Orleans Saints running back Chris Ivory to a two-year deal, a deal that I think You know, before getting into it, whether I think it's a good deal or not, I think it's a position that definitely was an area of need. Obviously, last year, if you look back to 2017, uh, the running back two position was was a problem for the Buffalo Bills practically the entire year. Mike Tolbert was used as their running back two, and I honestly don't want to take anything away from Mike Tolbert because he was just told to play a specific particular role that might not have suited him, whereas I think he is a good player in his skill set, in his uh, in his role. So the Bills, you know, didn't use him the right way, and realistically he should have never been a RB2 in an NFL offense. He's a fullback. So for Buffalo to look at their areas of need and say, hey, we need a running back, um, you know, to back up LaShawn McCoy, I think that that's, that's warranted. There, there's definite, that was a definite need uh, for the Buffalo Bills on that side of the ball and, and definitely one of the top needs on their team along with uh, many others. So they checked off that box in terms of positions that they need to look at, positions that they need to go after, positions that they need to fill, and I think that's great. Um, that just shows that Brandon Bean is on his P's and Q's alongside Sean McDermott, and the Buffalo Bills finally have a cohesive unit on their team in their front office that can say, hey, we have these needs, whether it's the secondary, whether it's the front seven, whether it's the offensive line, whether it's a quarterback, and whether it's a running back, they are in mutual agreement that those are needs on this team, and they've gone after those needs and, and have filled those needs. Vontae Davis, a veteran player, and Chris Ivory, a veteran player, two vets have signed with the Buffalo Bills thus far, which has led many to speculate that the presumed quote-unquote trade-up for a franchise quarterback could be possible. I don't really think that that's the case. I think that they saw two players that were available in the free agency market that were veteran players that have had serviceable years in the NFL, that have started a lot of games in the NFL, especially in the case of Vontae and and Chris Ivory, that they are willing to sign these guys on on two short-term deals. Vontae's a one-year deal and Chris Ivory's a two-year deal. And I've, you know, just talked to a few Bills fans throughout the day today about the news, and they've talked about how they liked the deal, they think it was definitely warranted, but they also think that Chris Ivory is quote-unquote old. Chris Ivory is his... It, 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 Chris Ivory has played in a backup role for the last few seasons. He's going to play in a backup role for the Buffalo Bills. So in terms of mileage or wear and tear, I, I'm not seeing it. You know, I'm seeing it with other free agents out there, like guys like Jonathan Stewart, who have put a lot of miles on the tires, who have taken the bumps and bruises. Chris Ivory, not so much. He's been a rotational running back for the better part of the last few seasons. And I, I really think that um, him on this Buffalo Bills team, having him on this Buffalo Bills team is only in a backup role. Buffalo's not looking to start him, obviously, because they have LaShawn McCoy uh, in in tow. So all in all, this was an upgrade at a position of need. It was an upgrade with a quality veteran. It was an upgrade with a respected veteran in the league. And I don't think he's going to be asked to do a whole lot. Uh you know, will he be their true running back too? I can't even say that because although he has the experience, although he has started games, they are very high on a player that they signed late in the season last year, Marcus Murphy, who uh, stepped in late in the year, produced, performed, and I definitely think that he's going to be somebody that's in their future plans. So, you know, the Miami game, LaShawn McCoy goes down, it's a win or, 
you know, don't make the playoffs and, you know, hope that Baltimore loses to Cincinnati, as we all well know. And LaShawn McCoy went down with an injury. Marcus Murphy stepped in and, and they were able to win that game. Um, there's been, there were other instances before the, before that game, the week before. Um, I can't remember who they played off the top of my head, but he played very well. Uh, very well. So, I'd like to like to see what he's got, and I know that the Buffalo Bills, you know, are high on him as well because he's he was um, extended for another year uh, beyond the practice squad contract through an actual NFL contract before he was just a uh, what they call a rental. So I'm very interested to see what what that what that brings. I think that there's validity in that. I think that there's honesty in that, and saying that. Although they signed Chris Ivory to a two-year deal, although he's experienced, although he started a lot of games, I don't know if they're really going to lean on him as the true running back two when they have Marcus Murphy, who, as I mentioned, they're very high on. Um, I think this definitely crosses off the option of drafting a running back with any of the draft choices that they have this year, uh, just based on the fact that they have other needs, more so, uh, you know, quarterback, more so up front on the offensive line, more so on the defensive line as well. Linebacker is a huge position of need, and, and really all around depth is a is a huge uh, issue on this current Bills team uh, next year. Being that they made the playoffs, I want to see them improve. I want to see them make that next step. What I don't want to see is the team have injuries. The team not know who to turn to in the event of an injury. So, all in all, I mean, I, I'm, I'm happy about it. I'm not going to be, like, over over excited, over-exaggerated, overthink it, because I really don't think it's a huge move. I think it's a depth move, which, you know, it's good that they're improving their depth, they're improving their team, and that's something to be excited about. But in the event that LaShawn McCoy goes down... Uh, Chris Ivory, I'll be more comfortable with that spot. I'm excited about it in a depth move, not really thinking of it as if it's going to make a huge impact. I don't know if that makes sense. I, I, I'm just not seeing like where people would be like, "Woohoo, we got Chris Ivory." I think it's a good move, but I'm not jumping up and down, you know, um, you know, doing the the Rocky on top of the stairs, you know, celebration. I, I'm I'm at I'm at the point where. I think it's a good move. I think they get a quality veteran. I think they improve the depth on their team. But Marcus Murphy is high on their on their list. And barring anything crazy, you know, him showing up out of shape, which we saw with Carlos Williams, barring him, you know, he seems like a good character guy, you know, making a mistake in that realm. Um, I think Marcus Murphy is in their plans. He's young. He's he's uh, very elusive. He offers similar skills to LaShawn McCoy, and I, I think they'd be fools to not give him much of a look. And from what I've heard, they're going to give him more of a look in this running back rotation. So, LaShawn McCoy is not getting any younger. With Brian Dable and this offense, they, they like to use multiple players uh, in, in one position. So we can definitely see Chris Ivory being used more as a receiving back. It adds a new, div- a new dimension to their offense in terms of, of uh, you know, what – what roles can Chris Ivory fit in? Uh, I'm very excited about that. That's for sure. I'm excited to see Brian Dable's uh, offense on this Bills team, with this Bills personnel, with Calvin Benjamin, with Charles Clay, with Zay Jones, who I really think is going to have a bounce back year. Um, and, you know, the, hopefully they restore the, the offensive line a little bit. Go in another direction. There's a lot of question marks there. What do they do with Cordy Glenn and things like that? But... All in all, I think this is a good move. I do think Bills fans should be excited about the prospects of Buffalo improving their depth, um, but it's not a move that I think will win them a Super Bowl. If if that makes more sense, that's that's how I would put it. Um, but you know, expectations are Chris Ivory's thirty one years old. There could we have to really look at the realistic um, outcomes, analyze any and all outcomes. One outcome could be that. He could show up to training camp, and maybe they don't like what they see, and they cut him. That could happen. That has happened before on many uh, occasions with not just the Buffalo Bills, but other teams 
in the National Football League. The guy doesn't really pan out. The guy doesn't really show what he's made of. Uh, I'm very interested in seeing what he's made of because I do think this guy's still got a little bit left in the tank. And I was excited when I heard that they were uh, hosting him because um, I do think that he wants to win and he wants to play hard and he does play hard. I thought Chris Ivory would be the guy in Jacksonville, and obviously once Leonard Fournette became available to them in the draft, that wasn't the case. Leonard Fournette is a a one-in-a-million, you know, talent, and just goes to show you, you know, they said the running back position was dead, but if you can get an elite running back, teams are going to be looking to go after that elite that elite prospect so um i'm ryan thomas it was the thomas take the buffalo bills signed chris ivory to a two-year deal my thoughts on that i wrap up um at the end of each and every podcast my thoughts on that i'm excited i think it's a good depth move i think it brings a lot to the table in terms of um you know expanding the offense with brian dable's offense uh guys they, they like to use multiple running backs. They like to use multiple players in, in one position. So uh, very excited to see what happens in terms of Ivory come my time at St. John Fisher this year, which will be amazing. I can't wait to go back there and, and watch the training camp, take it all in, and be surrounded by the team and the players and stuff. Um, it's going to be a true, true great opportunity. And... Hopefully I get to talk to some more players this year. Hopefully I get to talk to Chris Ivory. That'd be that'd be pretty cool. But to end note, to, to put an ending note on this, to final the final take on this, it's great to see veteran players come to Buffalo um, based on the fact that they think that this team wasn't going to be that good last year and seeing them be better than they were under the direction of head coach Sean McDermott uh, lends a lot to my reasoning as to why I, I really, you know, love Sean McDermott as the Bills head coach. He's changed the culture here. He's he's really revived the image of the Buffalo Bills in the eyes of the professionals, the veterans of the NFL that think that the Buffalo Bills are a team that they can go to that really uh, embraces them. And I really like that. That's probably the best part of these two signings here with Vontae Davis and Chris Ivory is that it shows that veteran players are willing to play here. They do notice how we've gotten better in and out of the locker room, and uh, that's great. So let's go Buffalo. As always, I will keep you guys posted on any and all Buffalo Bills news right here on the Thomas Take Sports Podcast on Grandstand Sports Network. I'm Ryan Thomas. We'll be right back as I wrap up the co-main event of UFC 222, Frankie the Answer Edgar versus Brian T-City Ortega. <laughs> 